hundreds of years, the bow and arrow was the most powerful weapon known to man. Although it is no longer needed for survival, archery has become a very popular sport. With the development of new materials came new designs for bows and arrows. Today's working recurve bow is unsurpassed for power and accuracy. There are three parts to a bow, handle, upper limb, and lower limb. At the end of each limb, there is a knock to hold the string. At the center of the string is a reinforced section called the serving. This is where the arrow fits onto the string. The principal parts of an arrow are the shaft, the knock, fletching, and pile. A shooting glove or a simple shooting tab will protect the fingers and will allow a smooth release of the string. An arm guard should always be used to protect the arm from the string. One way to select a proper length of arrow is to measure the distance from the armpit to the second joint of the index finger. This student should use an arrow 28 inches long. The important factor in choosing a bow is its weight. That means the weight required to pull it back the full length of the arrow. The worst single mistake made by beginning archers is that of choosing bows too strong for them. It is important that you have a bow which you can draw and hold comfortably even after an hour or two of shooting. After selecting the proper bow and arrow length, Always use the same one. You must be consistent before you can expect accuracy. Here is the proper way to brace a bow. Turn the face away for protection. The bow does not touch the ground. Press with the heel of the hand and slip the string into place. Then immediately twist the bow so that the string is towards you and check to see that the string is properly in both grooves, at both ends. Now straddle the firing line and face 90 degrees away from the target. The shoulders should be lined up straight with the target. The feet should be comfortably separated and approximately parallel. The weight should be firmly on both feet. The arrow is placed on a shelf which is built into most bows. Be sure that the cock feather points away from the bow. Most arrows have a ridge behind the cock feather that you can feel with your thumb. With a little practice, it will become a natural habit to take an arrow, twist it until you feel the ridge, and place it on the string without even thinking about it. The string is held near the end of the first three fingers. The string should fit tightly enough in the knock so that the arrow does not have to be held in place. It merely rests lightly between the fingers. The bow is raised and drawn at the same time. The back remains straight. The bow arm is slightly bent to clear a path for the string. The bow is held loosely with the weight on the heel of the hand. The back of the arrow hand should be flat, and the hand and the forearm should fall in a straight line with the arrow. In this position, the shoulder muscles, not the arm muscles, hold the weight of the bow. The most important rule in becoming a skilled archer is consistency. And the most important factor for consistency is the point on the face to which the arrow is drawn. This is called the anchor point. 
Many fine target archers use this anchor point. The tip of the forefinger touches the corner of the mouth and the thumb is locked under the chin. Others hold the forefinger under the chin so that the string crosses the corner of the mouth. Still others line up the string on the center of the nose and chin. A little experimenting will tell which anchor point is most natural for you. The important thing is that you use the same one every time. To release the arrow, simply relax the fingers and let the string slip off. Except for the three fingers that release the string, every part of the body should be held perfectly still until the arrow is well on its way. At the same time, the body should be relaxed, never tense. There are several ways to aim at a target. One is the point of aim method. If you line up the tip of the arrow on the center of the target, you will probably miss the target completely. So the trick is to find the right point of elevation to sight on so that the arrow will hit the bullseye. Let's suppose that we have a target 30 yards away and aim point blank at the center of the target. If the arrow passes over the target this high, then our point of aim should be lowered the same distance. We'll mark the new point of aim with a tennis ball. Bullseye. So we have found the proper point of aim for this distance. Now let's move back to 60 yards and again aim point blank. If the arrow falls short, we will raise our point of aim. Although the point of aim is now above the target, the arrow drops enough at this distance to hit the mark. Keep in mind that the points of aim we have found are accurate only for this archer, this bow, and this arrow. Each person should find his own point of aim for each distance. Most target archers have sights on their bows. The dot is always lined up on the center of the target. As the correct setting is found for each distance, it can be marked on the bow. Of course, in field archery, you won't always know the distance to the... A few safety rules are absolutely essential. Never attempt to shoot a damaged bow or arrow. Never shoot straight up. Use an adequate backstop. When in a group, wait until everyone has finished shooting before going forward to retrieve the arrows. Never, under any circumstances, point a drawn bow at another person. Remember that the bow and arrow has always been a very deadly weapon. With these safety rules in mind, and with a consistent shooting method, you will be ready to try new games and new targets.
archery can be a source of many hours of golden pleasure.